talk about uh, designing a shaft. Uh, perhaps we specify an initial diameter and we go through and analyze the shaft design and we discover that it fails due to deflection, that it, the deflection at some point ex exceeds uh, constraint, exceeds a, a limit that we have on on the deflection. So let's look at a technique that allows us to iteratively uh, try new diameter sizes in an intelligent way so that we can very efficiently come up with a correct diameter for a particular design. More specifically, if we find that the deflection exceeds at some point the allowable deflection, then we can use an update formula for diameter. And we'll look in just a moment where this update formula comes from. So the new diameter is going to be based on the old diameter Here we have a design factor, the old deflection, and then here's the allowable deflection. And this is all raised to the power of one fourth. And what we're trying to do here is try to get the maximum deflection in the shaft to match this allowable deflection. If it is below this allowable deflection, then the shaft is over-designed. If it's above this allowable deflection, then it's not a feasible design. So this is really a heuristic sort of approach. And also, I should point out too, what if we have a non-constant diameter? Well, then we apply this formula for each one of the sections, each segment in the shaft that has its own uh, constant diameter. And then we look for the largest ratio, d new over d old. And then we choose the largest ratio, or the largest change in diameter. And then we apply this same increase, the same ratio, to all of the diameters in the shaft. And this is a conservative approach, uh, but it's a relatively straightforward strategy for updating the diameter in a shaft. So let's have a look at where this formula comes from. So if we look at the case again, where we have a shaft with a cantilever extension with some radial force applied to it, this is very similar to the cantilever beam, then the deflection at the end of the shaft at L, that's going to be equal to the radial force times L squared divided by 6 times EI times the quantity L minus 3L, or in other words, minus FL to the power of 3 divided by 3 EI. And keep in mind, if this is a circular cross-section, then I is going to be equal to pi D to the power of 4 divided by 64. So therefore, the deflection at the end of the shaft, and this is going to be the maximum def deflection in this particular loading and boundary condition case, that's going to be minus, so downwards, 64 FL to the power of 3 divided by 3 pi times E times D to the power of 4. So let's say uh, we're trying to achieve an allowable deflection and solve for the diameter. If we plug in Y allow for YL, then that gives us a clue where this power to the one-fourth comes from. So this update formula is based on physics. So at least in simple cases, this update 
formula actually is exact. So in other words, if we apply this update formula, we can get to the correct value of the diameter in a single iteration. Okay, let's go through an example that utilizes this update formula. Let's say we have a cantilever beam or a shaft that can be modeled as a cantilever beam. Let's say that uh, we have these parameter values. The length of the shaft is a half meter. And Young's modulus here is 207 gigapascals. The downward force in the radial direction is one kilonewton. Let's say the allowable deflection at the end of the shaft is one millimeter. And now let's design this shaft. The design problem here in the simplified case is to find the correct diameter. Or at least we want to find the smallest diameter that is going to satisfy this allowable deflection constraint. Let's also say that the design factor here is just going to be one. And let's make an initial guess for the diameter. Let's say we're going to guess 10 millimeters or one centimeter. If one centimeter is our initial guess for the shaft diameter, let's find out what the maximum deflection is. If we use the formula that we just went through, our deflection y1, or in other words, the deflection as a function of d1, if we plug in the numbers for that, we're going to end up with a deflection of 0 0.41 meters. This is much larger than our allowable deflection of one millimeter as the maximum deflection in the shaft. And I should say just for a moment a few things about the magnitude of this deflection. So the model that we're using, or in other words this y of l being equal to minus 64 fl to the power of 3 all divided by 3 pi e d to the power of 4. This model is a linear model. It's based on the assumption that we only have small deflections. And this deflection up here of 0.4 meters relative to the 0.5 meter length of the shaft, that is a huge deflection. So this simple linear model is nowhere close to being valid. So if we wanted to predict the deflection of a shaft with this diameter, with just one centimeter, with one kilonewton of force at the end of 0.5 meters of shaft, then we're going to need a different model. We're going to need a model that accounts for nonlinearities, for nonlinear deflections. But uh, we, to solve this problem, we don't need to do that. Here we're just trying to illustrate how to use the iterative formula. And so if we do come up with a design or a value for the shaft diameter that produces something close to this one millimeter allowable deflection, that's a small deflection. And then this model, this linear model, that is going to be valid. So let's have a look at how to use this formula. We need a new value for the diameter. We're going to call that D2. That's going to be a function of the old diameter or D1. And if you recall, that's going to be the absolute value of the design factor times y1 divided by y allow. If we plug all of those numbers in, and that's all raised to the power of 1 fourth, then this is what we get. We get 0 0.045 meters, or 4.5 centimeters. So let's see how we did. Let's find out what the maximum deflection is for this design. D2 equals 4.5 centimeters. And we will call that Y2. That's going to be Y of D2, plugging everything into this formula based on a linear model. And 
as expected, it produces a one millimeter deflection. It gives us exactly the allowable deflection. This is really what we want. If we design a shaft with deflection lower than this, then that means the shaft is bigger than we need. We've over-designed it. It's more expensive than we need. If we design a shaft that's smaller and produces greater deflection, then it's not a feasible design. We have violated uh, a design constraint. So this is ideal to get as close as we can to this uh, allowable deflection constraint without violating it. So here we're using an iterative formula, and th this is especially useful in cases uh, where we cannot invert the analysis formulas to get an exact design formula. And we've encountered this before when we went through the section on stress analysis for shafts. We were able to develop a formula based on fatigue analysis that produced a value for diameter uh, based on inverting the analysis formula. Uh, and so in some simple cases we can do that as well. We could actually invert the formula for deflection to get the diameter, but that's really only in simple cases. So if we can't do the inversion, then we can apply an iterative formula like this. And, and this is really a root-finding approach for design.